Why it's important to have a thermometer hygrometer when you grow Nepenthes? Not having the proper humidity and temperature will prevent your plants to picture. But if you don't measure it, how can you adjust it? Today, we'll talk about how to measure the data about your temperature and humidity. So let's dive in. Hi, my name is Remy, and on this channel, I share with you everything I know about growing Nepenthes on a windowsill. So if you are new, consider subscribing. This video was filmed a few weeks ago in few parts. The, the first part was the unboxing, uh, plus the product review, testing the product, and um, what I gain out of it. So uh, excuse me for the different uh, timeline. Uh, I had to remix everything. So sometime I will be like uh, gray and tired. It was before vacation and uh, this is me after vacation. So uh, sorry for the, the, the mess and um, enjoy the video. Oh, and make sure you stick until the end because at the end I will show you how this product uh, saved me a lot of stress during my vacation. So many times um, a beginner asks on forums or um, Facebook why my plant is not picturing or what's wrong with my plant? And usually there is some good soul that will uh, ask them to help them. Okay, what temperature do you have? What humidity do you provide your plants? Because that's something that could impact the fact that they don't picture. And then these beginners don't know. They don't collect data. They have no idea what is the temperature, what is the humidity. And uh, well, we, we cannot help these people. Uh, if you don't provide us proper information, we are not a magi magician or medium. We, we don't know. So it's really like aquarium. If a fish in your fish tank is sick, you will test the water to see, okay, is that uh, something wrong with the water? You will check the temperature, maybe it was too cold and it stressed the, the fish. So uh, again, collecting data about temperature and humidity for uh, Nepenthes, that's really important. Actually, before uh, buying my first Nepenthes, when I knew I was about to grow them on the window seal, I, I bought um, a small thermometer uh, hygrometer, uh, a cheap one, something not expensive, uh, just to, to start collecting data, to have an idea during summer, what kind of temperature is it? What kind of humidity? The humidity, I know I can easily manage that, uh, humidifier or uh, the water tray. Uh, temperature, it's harder. So I had to have an idea. Uh, I didn't know if I was able to grow island or lowlands or intermediates. So uh, this small device was helpful. But this device has a problem. Uh, you cannot reset the, this device. That means it will collect data for months and months. And just telling you th this was the lowest humidity you got and this is the highest you got. Uh, same for the temperature. If um, the um, last winter you had a really cold temperature and you are in summer, it will still show you the last coldest temperature. So um, it's not great to, to collect data like that. So um, the first month, I took the battery out every day and put it back. So I was able to collect data every day what is the humidity? What is the temperature? Maximum, minimum. Uh, and I just added that uh, to an Excel sheet uh, to start having a, um, a graphics. Uh, I'm really a visual person. Um, I need visual information. So even for a temperature. Um, then after a month, it was a pain to every day take the battery out, put it back. Uh, so I decided to collect data only once a week. So it's less precise, but at least I had to take the battery out only once a week. So after a year doing that, 
Uh, I um, finally got some um, graphic of the average temperature of my windowsill. On this graphic, temperature Celsius is on the left and the Fahrenheit is on the right. So here you will see that uh, it fluctuates, obviously, that's a window seal. So if it's summer or winter, it will influence. And especially here in Manitoba, uh, a lot of sun, but uh, during summer and really cold during winter. So it will change. Usually it's rare to go below 59 during the nights, but it will happen. Uh, sometime we have a really a cold wave and um, that's gonna be below this 59 Fahrenheit. Uh, but usually the nights will be uh, 59, 60, up to almost 70 during uh, the, the peak of summer this time, the temperature of the day. It will be usually around 68 and it can for a few months go higher like 77, um, 80 plus. That's really hot for a windowsill because the, the plant that will accept cold temperature usually will be island and they don't really like the warm summer. But um, so anyway, uh, this is the, the, the graphic I have, the data of my windowsill. If I take an example of uh, one of the first plants I got before having all this proper data, uh, Nepotes bongzo. If I search on this plant, it will tell me it's between 1000 and 2700 meter. Uh, that's a lot of difference. So it's supposed to be um, able to adapt the temperature now uh, between 20 degrees Celsius to 28 during the day and for the night between 10 and 18. So now if I check the graphic, my plants is not picturing most of the year. That was frustrating because on paper it was supposed to be able to accept this temperature. But I took some picture of the last pictures with the dates and it showed me that the first picture came in the beginning of June, then four weeks after that, a second picture, then four weeks after that, a third picture, and uh, the last picture continued being great for three, four months, but no other pictures. So even if on paper this plant should uh, accept my windowsill, uh, I can tell that uh, no, the, the seeds were probably from the lowland uh, part. Uh, that's why it's not picturing, but at least with this data, I know why it's not picturing. So I just sold this plant to somebody that have a humidity chamber uh, and I'm sure this plant will be way happier than with me. And that's gonna be the same for the Izumae. I'm just about to, to sell Izumae because it's not picturing either. All the other Nepates accept this kind of temperature, but Izumae and Bongzo don't. Uh, that's why collecting all these data will help you to understand what's happening. I know it's not me. I'm not doing something wrong. It's just yeah, the, the species don't like this temperature. So again, knowing your condition, humidity, temperature, day and night, maximum and minimum, uh, that's going to be helpful. So how to collect this data? There is uh, this cheap uh, uh, hygrometer thermometer, uh, but again, uh, it won't be really pleasant to do because every time you will have to take the battery out, put it back. So I decided to test another kind of thermometer and uh, hygrometer. So I was looking for a new sensor and uh, I knew uh, it had to be waterproof, obviously, uh, because I'm spraying my plants. Uh, if I was not spraying my plants, Probably I wouldn't care, but uh, the fact that it's waterproof is just a security. I mean, it's already a humid place to grow tropical plants, so I don't really want anything bad happening. So waterproof, uh, something with an app that saves me time, that collect all these data for me. Um, I wanted something uh, plug and play. Uh, so I don't want to start synchronizing something really complex. No, I want something I plug, connect, boom, done. Uh, yeah, that's exactly what I was searching. I was also uh, looking for something that will uh, use maybe Bluetooth uh, because uh, 
I heard that there is some sensor that uh, are Wi-Fi, but I also heard that they, they just kill the battery. Wi-Fi sensor just drain the battery uh, and it's one of the cons uh, of the Wi-Fi. And if you have like two, three, four Wi-Fi uh, sensor, that's gonna be messy to, to start connecting everything. That's more work. Uh, Bluetooth uh, is just way easier. It uh, consumes less battery. So uh, if I change the battery every two years, I'm happy. I was also uh, searching for uh, something that works with my uh, not brand new phone, the, the one I'm using right now. Uh, I have uh, the S9, Galaxy S9. It's not old, but clearly uh, we are far from the, the last uh, iPhone or Galaxy S21, I believe is now. Um, again, I prefer spending money on stuff connected to my plants than to my phone. So uh, the fact that uh, you have to have the last uh, brand new uh, phone, um, no, not for me. I wanted something really easy to, to use on all device. Other sensor, the, the support team was, for what I heard, not that great. Again, I just checked Amazon review for spotting that. Uh, people were complaining that support don't answer. Having something that is, uh, they are really good on support and uh, they are fast because they are just in the US. Uh, so that's pleasant too. So, okay, there is a cheaper sensor, uh, but they are cheaper. Uh, the, the precision is not there. Again, I have so comments. Uh, there is also the fact that uh, they collect data every hour, half an hour or quarter, where this one is, really checking every single minute. So that's really the, the precision. Uh, you don't have to, but I, I mean, it's always better, right? More data means more information. And finally, I checked the, the quality. Uh, some people uh, post picture on the, the Amazon where you see two sensor put side to side and they show different humidity or different temperature because the calibration is not good. The sensor is not precise. So it's uh, not that important for a window seal if you are uh, 65 or 62% humidity, but why not having the best? Uh, again, I don't spend money on other stuff. I don't have a brand new car, uh, so no, my money is, goes to my plants and everything related to the plants. So yeah, the sensor, the quality was really important for me. So I decided to test sensor push. So um, it looks really great. There is a lot of um, good review. Uh, again, it's uh, not a sponsor video, so it's gonna be affiliate links on the description for you to, to check the review. Uh, and if you want to order, well, it will help the channel for sure. Uh, but yeah, this sensor is supposed to help me to monitor day and night the temperature and humidity. Uh, and even the, there is the pressure. So for, it's probably for uh, outside if it's gonna rain or not. Uh, but for me, it's really humidity and temperature that I'm interested in. And it's uh, synchronized with my cell phone. So that means I won't have to collect data, take notes. Everything will be collected on the app and uh, I should be able to extract the data and have a proper graphics. Uh, seeing uh, when I'm spraying my plants, probably raising the humidity, but how long did it last? Uh, same for the temperature, I will be able to have some alarms uh, just in case it got too warm because again on the graphic you saw that uh, I was away for a week and we had uh, this exact uh, <laughs> bad heat wave so the window seal went really warm. Uh, if I was there I would knew that and uh, I would just run the AC just to prevent this temperature to build up and to stress the plants that would uh, give this um, this small lead 
an epen test because they are stressed. Uh, so it's no big deal, but still, if I was able to know what was happening, I would uh, really like it. So that's why uh, this sensor should be great. And uh, I will just um, open the box and then I will install that. Oh, funny. I don't know. Oh, that's a battery. Look at that. This is a huge battery. Wow. Okay, and we have small box, tutorial. We have the sensor. So that's this tiny, I don't know if you can see that. That's this tiny uh, thing. You will just, you can attach it here and suspend it uh, somewhere. Uh, you can put it um, just beside the, uh, a plant. So I don't know exactly where I will put it, but uh, I will show you after the installation. And I will start uh, testing it, and that's going to be the second part of uh, this uh, review. So I tested this sensor and it, uh, it's great, it's really precise. I can tell exactly when I sprayed, what happened, so uh, the humidity boost and the temperature drop. But uh, it also tells me that even if I love spraying my plants, it's useless because the temperature will go lower and you will boost for an hour and a half. So it's not uh, really changing the game. So it's just for my pleasure and for the sphagnum moss. So now if we compare when I'm not spraying, it's the same temperature and the humidity is almost the same. So in plus of humidity and temperature, there is more. I have the drew point. I'm not sure I will need that on a windowsill, but if you have a greenhouse, well, it's uh, perfect. There is also another thing, uh, the vapor pressure deficit. Again, I'm not uh, smart about all this tech thing for plants. Uh, so I will show you why I'm not turning it on all the time. So if I just turn on the temperature and the this uh, VPD, we see that, okay, this is really similar. So my guess is this uh, VPD, a vapor uh, pressure deficit, whatever, is related to the heat. So I don't really need that for me. It's really more the humidity. The app show you the full year of data, but you can export uh, the data for more precise uh, Excel sheet. As you know by now, uh, last summer I had a heat wave when I was away. I was not knowing the temperature here and not able to do anything. But um, to prevent that, and because uh, I, I can be a little bit crazy with my plants, I decided to go the extra mile and get a kind of add-on of the sensor. Uh, this is the Wi-Fi gateway. That means it will be able to connect this sensor to internet, uh, to the cloud, and I will be able to know exactly the temperature of the windowsill even when I'm not home. Uh, so that's a kind of a smart um, home device, and that's Perfect because, I mean, I have already a uh, Google Nest at home, so I can choose from everywhere to, to run the AC, to lower the temperature, or to heat up the house, even in, when I'm not here. So um, if the sensor is connected to internet and there is a heat wave when I will be away, I will have the alarm and then I will be able to uh, reduce the temperature. So that's um, not mandatory, maybe a little bit crazy, but again, when you love your plants, you love your plants. So, um, unboxing again, second unboxing. So tutorial, and that's the small device. We have electricity, guarantee obviously, and this is so that's going to be it. So that's this uh, small 
device. It's really tiny, but again, it will allow me to connect my sensor to internet. And um, yeah, I will try that, uh, especially during the, my vacation. And um, yeah, the heat wave should never be a problem anymore. Okay, I'm back home. Uh, I was away 10 days in vacation and uh, obviously uh, they got an heat wave uh, in town when I was away. So I'm really glad that I had this gateway. So let me show you what happened. So I was in vacation the last 10 days, but before going to vacation, I put an alarm to 26 degrees Celsius. So it's 79 Fahrenheit, uh, just to prevent uh, any heat wave. And for sure, heat wave came. So now I will show you what happened. So at uh, 6 p.m., I received a notification telling me it was too hot. So I connected directly to my Google Nest and put the AC on. And in less than 20 minutes, everything was fixed. Question of the day. Do you have a, a sensor or something that collects data on your uh, windowsill or even greenhouse or uh, humidity chamber? Uh, just because you're like me, you, you like to collect data and to understand how every plant reacts, to just sort them. And um, so, yeah, if you have a sensor, please leave the name in the comments and let me know what you think about it, if there is pros and cons. And um, again, if you have any question, shoot in the comments. And uh, until next time, happy growing.